here at ASH this year in December of 2017. It's a very exciting time for AML and that's because really this is the first time in decades that we can say standard therapy for AML has the potential for changing. Until this year, really, we had really been working with two drugs, donorubicin and cytarabine, and over the last five decades, all we've done is try to change the doses of those two drugs to try and see if we could improve on standard therapy. But this year alone, we've had four or five new drugs approved for use in AML, and that's really going to change the landscape of therapy. But it also brings with it some challenges, because we don't really know which patients will benefit, what studies we need to do before we start therapy, who should wait until we have the results of those studies before starting therapy, but it's a very exciting era because those drugs are now changing the landscape of treatment for AML. So since April, we've had drugs approved. We've had Midastorin approved for use in patients who have FLT3 mutated AML. We know that that drug is of benefit in patients under the age of 60. We don't know what we should do with patients over the age of 60. We've had Milotarg or Gemtuzumab approved for patients with CD33 positive disease, and we know those with core binding factor leukemias clearly benefit. But those with intermediate risk disease or those going to transplant, we still don't know. And those with adverse cytogenetics, we don't think will benefit from use of that drug. We now have other targeted therapies for IDH mutations, some that have been approved and some that are waiting approval, which look like they are exciting in relapse disease. We don't know yet how to use them up front. And we have a new agent, which is a liposomal preparation of donorubicin and cytarabine, which is Vixios, which looks like it benefits those patients with secondary disease or those with myelodysplasia-related cytogenetics. Again, we don't know exactly which population to use that in, but it looks best in those ages 60 to 75. So again, a very exciting time. It means that we need to have more sophisticated testing at the time of diagnosis in order to know how to use these, but we just think that we're going to continue improving. Combinations of these agents will be very exciting. We look forward to further studies that are available.